In today's video, we are going to do an upgrade from an i5-7640X to an i7-7820X. Now, the reason for this is that when this computer was originally built, it was built to be a budget PC. Um, and it's recently been converted into a video editing machine which needs a lot more horsepower. Um, currently this machine is being used to render 360 video which requires a lot of horsepower. So we are going to be doubling the cores and quadrupling threads uh, of the CPU. Now this is going to be a very quick video um, and it's only um, its only purpose is uh, to show you how quick and easy it is for anybody who wants to upgrade their CPU to a more powerful one, how easy it is. Now, in this video, um, replacing the CPU is going to be quite straightforward. All you're going to need is a new CPU, some rubbing alcohol, paper towel, screwdriver, some thermal compound, and some more RAM. Now, the reason why we need more RAM for this upgrade is because we're going from a two-channel to a four-channel setup. The i5 only supports two-channel memory, whereas i7 supports four-channel memory. So, of course, need four DIMMs. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. So the first step is we're going to be removing the uh, the heat sink. So this here is a Noctua U14S. So what we need to do is remove uh, the clips to hold the uh, fan in place. Like so. This is a little bit challenging because the uh, the graphic card is so close to the uh, the heat sink, but we should be able to get it off without having to remove the video card. There we go. Uh, fan is removed. Just hang that over the side, and next we will remove the heat sink. Only Noctua makes uh, heat sinks that are, um, you know, powerful enough to actually cool uh, an X-series properly. This one here is not the biggest uh, Noctua fan you can get. There's one bigger than this, which is the um, Noctua uh, D15. Uh, and that there is the ultimate cooler, which has basically two of these uh, tower of radiators. So taking a look here at my thermal compound you can see that uh, it spread quite well um, it looks like actually there might be a little bit too much thermal compound uh, because it's uh, spread uh, quite chunky uh, so note for next time so now what I'm going to do is um, we are going to have to Remove the mounts here so that we could uh, <clears throat> take out the old CPU. <coughs> okay, so now that we got the brackets off, the next thing is we're going to remove the actual um, processor. So, again, remove one side and then we're going to unclip the second side. And now we can open up the little door and remove the processor. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to clean this up using rubbing alcohol uh, and uh, same with the, the heat sink so that when I put the uh, new uh, i7 processor in there um, it's just a quick assembly. <clears throat> okay so as you can see I'm just removing the uh, thermal grease with some paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol trying to uh, get it nice and clean and remove all the excessive uh, thermal grease off 
of the heat sink. Now that we have that all cleaned up, uh, we are ready to put in our new i7 processor. So now, as you can see here, this is the i7 and this is the i5. They look identical by the IHS, but when you flip them over, uh, you can see that they're slightly different on the back side. Uh, mainly, uh, there's a, looks like a few extra, you know, capacitors type things on there. Um, but overall, uh, they're identical. Uh, of course, uh, they have to fit the same socket, the uh, LG A2066. So here's the i7, and what we're going to do is we're just going to match the uh, the arrows to the arrows. So we're just going to turn this around this way, and just set that down onto the socket. And there we go, arrow to arrow. Now we're just going to close this thing up, um, lift that, clip that down, and then clip this guy down. Perfect. Done. So make sure that the, these posts here are screwed down so that when we attach our heat sink later on, uh, they're good. So. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, we need to uh, add some more RAM into this uh, PC because we're going from a two channel setup to a four channel setup. So what we're going to do is we are going to add the RAM to the opposite side of the processor. Okay, so putting in your RAM is quite easy. You just push back uh, your, um, your pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start inserting these uh, into the correct channel. And then make sure you push down. And then it should lock right into place. And then we'll do the same thing for the next one. So put the RAM module in. And then push it into the slot. Perfect. Got to just unscrew the thermal compound lid. And then we go in here. Now, this time here, I'm going to actually do an X. Uh, this way here, I can control how much I put down. Just a nice thin. X. Perfect. Then we put on our heatsink brackets. Like so. And screw our brackets on. The other side as well. Next I'll take the screwdriver and tighten up these screws so that it's nice and tight. 
because we don't want the heat sink to separate from the processor. It's going to cause inefficient cooling. <clears throat> now, we're going to take our radiator uh, and I'm just going to place it down there. Now, this is designed to go any which way you want it to go. Uh, the fan will just snap onto either side. Perfect. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start screwing down one side and then I will only do it partially and then I'll screw down the other side. That way I can keep the uh, heat sink even. Now with these fans, what you want to do is you want to screw it down all the way until it stops. They have a, uh, a spring on the screw um, that will let you know when to stop. Okay, that side's done. And that side's done. Now we're going to replace our fan. Now, be careful of the airflow. The, it is directed on the fan, so the air is going to flow this way. And let's open this up. And I'm going to try to clip this on. Now, I'm hoping that I don't have to remove my graphics card, which it looks like I won't. That's very good. Perfect. On there nice and tight. There we go. Now we're ready to, to go. So that's it. The whole process. Now I can just boot up the machine and uh, I can start using my new processor.